We're live. Great. Good afternoon, and welcome to this meeting of the Charlestown Innovation and Inclusive High School Perspective Screening Committee. I'm Chairperson Jerry Robinson. Because this is a remote meeting, I will ask Nick Sullivan to please call the roll. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Berg? Present. Dr. Caselius? Present. Ms. Robinson? President. All members are present, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Today's meeting is being shared live on Zoom. The video will be posted to the school committee's webpage. Tonight's meeting documents are posted on the committee's webpage, bostonpublicschools.org forward slash school committee under the January 19th meeting link. Any translations that are not ready prior to the start of the meeting will be posted as soon as they are finalized. The committee is pleased to be offering live simultaneous interpretation in Spanish, Haitian Creole, Cabo Verdiano, Cantonese, Mandarin, Vietnamese, and American Sign Language. After the interpreters finish introducing themselves and providing Zoom instructions, we will activate the interpretation icon, the globe, at the bottom of the screen. Click the icon to select your language preference. Will our Spanish interpreters please introduce yourselves and give Zoom instructions in Espanol. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening, members of the committee. Muy buenas noches, damas y caballeros. Mi nombre es Randolph Domínguez. Voy a ser su intérprete simultáneo el día de hoy. Por favor, para poder accesar esta reunión en el idioma español, por favor, buscar en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Allí van a encontrar un, un icono que parece un globo terráqueo. Por favor, pulse allí y seleccione el idioma español. Si está utilizando un celular o una tableta, por favor, buscar los tres puntos en la parte superior derecha de su pantalla. Allí puede pulsar y puede usted seleccionar el idioma español. Ahora los dejo con mi colega Luz para que se presente. Buenas tardes, uh, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here with you all this afternoon. Y gracias a la comunidad, aquí estaremos para eh, eh, interpretarles con Randolph. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Will our Haitian Creole interpreters please introduce yourselves and give Zoom instructions in Haitian Creole. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sergio Santillier, Haitian Creole Interpreter. Uh, C'est un plaisir nous gagner pour nous avoir permis encore pour nous traduire pour moi-même en Adé. Je n'ai pas suivi l'interprétation. Et ma commencé à connaître à la, ma fini à 6 heures, et puis n'a déjà pris à 6 heures, la fini à 7 heures. C'est maintenant encore à 7 heures si il y a une possibilité. Et pour entrer dans la conversation, on est cliqué dans le globe là, on est capable d'entrer et puis on a poser des questions. Nous remercions. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. Nom si Nadej. Uh, C'est un plaisir pour nous interpréter pour après-midi avec Sergio. Donc, comme Sergio fait que là, il va en toute instruction, il n'y a pas oublié, choisir que il y a et comme il dit nous, il va interpréter pour nous 6 heures pour 7 heures et il va interpréter pour nous après. Merci et bonne écoute. Thank you. Hello, Cabo Variano. Interpreters, please introduce yourselves and give Zoom instructions in Cabo Verdeano. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jose. Myself and my partner, Armand, we're going to be a Cabo Verdeano interpreter. Boa noite. Meu nome é José. Seria com meu companheiro Armando. Não sabemos fazer nós interpreter de aquela reunião de noite ali. Portanto, nós temos a computador, tem um globo lá de baixo, lá na única nós podemos calcar nele. E também nós um acesso nós chega mais para o que nós está no nosso idioma principal, que é Cabo Verde, que nós está selecionando. E se nós temos, por exemplo, a tablet ou móvel, tem aquele três pinguinhos no que nós está calca e lhe teremos um acesso no que nós também, diretamente nós está no nosso idioma Cabo Verde, que nós está selecionando a nossa língua de preferência. Então, nós temos que ali sintonizado com nós. O reunião também começa em breve. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Armando Monteiro. I'm going to be your key body interpreter. Boa noite, amigo e companheiro José. Nós sabemos ser nós intérpretes de uh, crioulo Cabo Verde. Boa noite. Thank you. Thank you. Will our Cantonese interpreters please introduce yourselves and give Zoom instructions in Cantonese? 
Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Anna. I'll be your Cantonese interpreter for the meeting tonight. Uh, 大家好,我是Anna,我是今天的广东话翻译,翻译员。现在你看到我的口译,请拣选 Cantonese广东话,你就去到广东话的翻译频道了。如果你手机的话,按个三个点,就按更多,也按广东话,也按广东话翻译频道了。Thank you. Thank you. Hi hey everyone, my name is Terry. I'll be your Cantonese interpreter as well. Uh,大家好,我是你的第二个广东话翻译。Thank you. Thank you. Will our Mandarin interpreters please introduce yourselves and give Zoom instructions in Mandarin? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, my name is Wei. Uh, today, uh, me and Maple will be your Mandarin interpreters. Hey, 大家好,我是您的普通话翻译为。今晚呢，我跟Maple是你的普通话翻译。呃，如果你需要翻译的话呢，请点击这个屏幕下方的地球仪，然后选择中文啊，这个Mandarin频道，然后就可以进这个频道，点我翻译。如果您是使用手机或
<laughs> I want to make sure that we do that as a matter of an official record. So, all righty. Please right. join and join. I will. I will. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanna thank Dr. Eccleson um, for his incredible work and uh, also Corey Harris, our chief of schools who worked with our uh, Office of uh, Data and Accountability as well to uh, put together this SWOT analysis, go through the prospectus carefully, provide that to us ahead of time so that we could review it. Uh, they also went through the 187 public comments that we got. I want to thank the public that weighed in. Um, I also want to thank the pers prospectus authors for providing, um, you know, uh, a way forward for Charlestown High School for us to consider. I also want to thank the Charlestown staff for continuing to engage in this important work of improvement at the school. Um, and just all the stakeholders who have come together to um, really look at Charlestown High School and work with the school district uh, to support it in its improvement efforts as we look at overall all of our high schools, which is what, uh, Madam Chair, you have uh, asked us to do uh, as we begin to uh, turn the corner on this pandemic response. So um, I'll have some comments further at the end um, uh, regarding my thoughts on the prospectus and also on our overall planning for high schools. Um, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Eccleson to share with us uh, some summary of regarding uh, the prospectus. Thank you, Superintendent, and thank you, Chair Robinson, uh, for the introduction. Um, let me just, for the folks in the audience, let me just give a quick one minute or two minute overview as I see it of the sort of key points of this, uh, of this prospectus. And then um, I'll share um, the analysis that, that Chief Corey Harris and I um, uh, will proffer to the, to the community for your consideration. Um, at its core, from our perspective, the innovation prospectus for the Charlestown Innovation Inclusion High School, it, it envisions a school that will provide students access to a fully inclusive, high quality grade seven to 12 education experience. The programming and graduation requirements would support pathways to college and careers, with students graduating from the school with a diploma and or an associate's degree or, professional, or a professional certificate. The proposal envisions a school with a strong partnerships with local colleges and universities and community groups to support college and career pathways. The school is designed to provide extended learning opportunities through extended, extended school year and school day, internship opportunities for students, as well as work study programming and dual enrollment opportunities. To accomplish the work at Charlestown uh, Innovation and Inclusion High School, the proposal asks for specific autonomies. One, autonomies relative to graduation requirements. Two, autonomies relative to curriculum. Three, autonomies relative to district professional development. Four, autonomies related to staffing and hiring five autonomies related to school calendar, six to budget, and seven from all district policies. I'll uh, ask my colleague, I believe Megan Costello, who is going to display a PowerPoint uh, for me to walk the community through. Um, this will be uh, our analysis. And I wanna thank uh, my colleague, Corey Harris, chief of schools for his partnership here. I'll share uh, our analysis of the strengths of the proposal um, some of the weaknesses as we see them, the opportunities, as well as the threats. And then we'll do a quick summary of the feedback of the 187 uh, public comments that we received so at a high level talking about some themes. We, we noted a significant number of strengths in this prospectus proposal. Um, and I'll share what some of those uh, include. Specifically, uh, we think that this, this proposal explicitly addresses um, a significant issue that we see in the data relative to Charleston High School, which is that the current school has declining enrollment. And this is a plan that is attempting um, to very squarely take on that problem. It would create another fully inclusive high school 
um, in the city of Boston, which is something that our parents and our community members are, are asking for and our students deserve. It's an opportunity to pilot a neighborhood K-12 school. Uh, there are three explicit pathways that we'll sort of talk about um, in some of the weaknesses and threats as well um, that are uh, sort of uh, feeder schools to this new school. Um, students would graduate with college credits or professional certificate. And many of these sort of ideas uh, align well with the superintendent's vision around high school reform and high school redesign more broadly. The plan uh, asks for additional 30 hours of professional development uh, for faculty and staff. And um, one key component of this is that uh, this, the, the plan asks for individualized learning plans for all students enrolled in the school. To a point I made earlier, uh, one, one real sort of alignment to, I think the district key strategies is that this, this proposal um, aligns well to um, the public uh, a conversation that the superintendent has led about high school redesign uh, more broadly across the city of Boston. And so we thank the applicants for, the, for that good work. There's also a number of weaknesses that we identified that we think are important to reveal and talk about pretty explicitly. Um, the applicant group did very little in engagement <laughs> and specifically no engagement with the Charlestown High School community members, which we see this uh, both from a sort of change management and implementation perspective as a real challenge moving forward. There was limited community engagement more broadly, um, and the only real engagement that we could find evidence of in the proposal was engagement at a specific school at the Elliott K-8 families. Um, the proposed uh, push and support for our multilingual learners, um, specifically with language-specific paras, uh, while, um, while Im impressive and really important, we had an open question about whether or not that type of support would uh, really be, would suffice, particularly for our students with interrupted formal education, our students in SEI classrooms, most specifically our students with English language development levels one and two. The plan is, is fairly silent on how it would meet the needs of current Charlestown High School students who are enrolled in substantially separate programs. There's a significant amount of students and from a design perspective, um, we were surprised that uh, there wasn't a design for those specific students first in the context of this proposal. Similar to that, in the three feeder schools that the school proposes, um, the uh, Elliott, the Warren Prescott, and the Harvard Kent, there are about 100 students who are enrolled in substantially separate programs at those three schools. And this proposal does not address how their needs would be met at this, at this specific school. Um, and then uh, just a few other things, just sort of skipping down a little bit. Um, the plan um, does not outline specific graduation plans for students enrolling in grades 10, 11, and 12, and, and yet ask for autonomy in this area without any details about what would be required um, given the school districts and school committee's approval of the mass core policy that we think is really essential. And then finally, in terms of weaknesses, would just point out that the, the proposed model guarantees a pathway for students, as I mentioned earlier, at the Elliott K-8, the Warren Prescott, and the Harvard Kent in grades seven and eight. That's about 100, 150 students total, and not enough certainly to fill the entire school. Um, and so um, the, the rest of the sort of enrollment um, processes for the school were fairly silent in the proposal, and uh, we identify as that's something that would need to be addressed moving forward should this, should this plan uh, move forward. Uh, similar to some of the strengths, we saw a significant number of opportunities. There's some exciting work embedded in the context of this proposal, particularly as we see it around college and career readiness. Uh, we see that this uh, is an opportunity to create a model for 712 expanded learning time that incorporate internship opportunities and, and college credit opportunities that are part of the superintendent's vision for, for seven to 12 redesign. And we think that this is a real opportunity to get this done right, especially in partnership with some of the um, proposed partners that are in this prospectus, including Digital Ready. Um, students uh, would have opportunities to engage with post-secondary learning during their high school experience. There'd be a pilot of dual enrollment um, and credit bearing opportunities for our students. 
And we saw some really exciting sort of partnerships described in here, uh, most notably the, the Leslie program that we think um, has significant potential. Um, and we have some questions about return on investment and cost, uh, but nonetheless think that this could be um, a significant opportunity for students across the BPS and for students at the school. In terms of threats, um, the, um, we, we identify uh, one significant threat here is the plan really did not address the needs of current students in substantially separate um, settings or the 100 students in substantially separates at the proposed feeder schools, um, which we see as, as particularly problematic. Um, we believe that the timeline for implementation, given most particularly the lack of engagement here, is not feasible. Um, and that um, auto an autonomy request blanketly from all BPS policies um, could create legal liability for that district moving forward. Um, from uh, someone who's leading academic work and um, also is partnering with the Department of Justice, um, it's unclear if the push-in model that's described for our multilingual learners would be in conflict with or support the DOJ requirements, most particularly for our English uh, language development one and two students. Um, and that's something that, that needs to be would explored further should this proposal, should this proposal move forward. And um, we, we found um, it concerning um, that there was a, a, um, a limit that was set on the, on the, num the percentage of students um, uh, with disabilities that, that could have access to the school. Um, and we think that that really needs to be rethought and reconsidered. Um, there's uh, no evidence um, of, of agreements with proposed partners. Certainly there's a, a lengthy number of partners that are proposed here, um, but it's not clear whether or not those, those partners are prepared to start. Um, and uh, there is an elimination of key partners that I think have been really good to the partnership with Charlestown more broadly in the past. And there's an elimination of those partnerships without clear evidence as to why. Let me, um, let me just quickly walk through some of the feedback that we received. Um, from the community. Uh, if we could slide forward, please. Excuse um, me, Dr. Eccleson, if you could please slow down a bit for our interpreters. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, I will certainly move slower. Um, as the superintendent mentioned, we received 187 public comments. Of those 187 comments, uh, 43 um, uh, acknowledged that they were uh, uh, in favor of the prospectus as posted on the website. Our summary of those, uh, those comments in, included, um, uh, according to the respondents, the current school does not meet the needs of the community and must do more to meet the needs of students. Um, respondents um, who were in favor of the prospectus expressed concerns about the current academic outcomes at Charlestown High, the lack of innovative opportunities for students, and the perception that there are three viable high schools in the BPS. There is support for an inclusive high school that serves the needs of junior and high school students in the Charlestown neighborhood. The community wants more attention to college and career readiness and believes that this proposal responds well to that request. And families want high, high quality school options in their neighborhood and uh, a high, a high quality school options that are not special admission. And they felt like this proposal um, attempts to accomplish both of those things, to offer a high quality school in the neighborhood and to ensure a school that is not special admission. Move on to the next slide. Of the 187 comments that were submitted, 130 uh, identified as being against the proposal. I will acknowledge that uh, most of these comments um, demonstrated um, an understanding that things needed to improve at Charlestown High School um, and um, expressed concern mostly about process. Um, these comments were from current teachers, students, and families, and there were fewer comments also from members of the Charlestown community who've lived in Charlestown and, and they wrote to weigh in on their specific um, concerns about this proposal. As I mentioned earlier, many of the respondents acknowledged that things needed to change and to improve, and that they were willing to do hard work to make that happen. However, however, given that there was no engagement with current stakeholders, they had a difficult time envisioning uh, a path forward. 
teachers often cited uh, things that they felt were misrepresented or misunderstood about the current context because no one took the time to hear their perspective. Teachers and students uh, acknowledged that they felt that this was a failed attempt to build support with stakeholders who would actually be asked to implement change. Um, and the fact that they weren't involved in that process would make that process much more difficult. Teachers and families um, expressed that, they, that the authors had failed to address plans for students at Charleston High School and the feeder schools, most particularly those students with the most need. We're talking about students in the, the students uh, with limited formal education and students who are currently educated in substantially separate uh, programs uh, who, uh, whose, whose education is not described, how that would be dealt with in this plan. Um, teachers, families, and students, um, uh, there was agreement between these, um, between these stakeholders um, that things need to change and improve, and they're willing to find a path toward collaboration, but they wanted that path to be done with community and not to community. Current Charlestown High School students who responded felt disrespected, and they see adults not taking their beliefs and thoughts into account. And educators um, communicated there was an attempt from stakeholders at one specific school to take over to benefit families and students from more privileged backgrounds. And then there were 14 comments on the next slide that were neutral. Um, and these neutral comments focus more on um, things that they saw that these, these um, respondents felt like there's some really exciting elements here. There's some things that we hope will be implemented and we also thought there was a missed opportunity to engage with community and specifically to plan for specific uh, current students at either the current um, Charleston High School or at one of the feeder schools. Many community organizations such as parent teacher organizations wrote in to create neutral comments, which is to say, there's stuff that we hope that the district will respond to here. And there's a missed opportunity to respond to specific needs of students. There were multiple comments from uh, people who were neutral that thought that there needed to be more thought to the admissions process and guaranteed pathways, which seemed intentionally vague. And that the prospectus had some big and bold ideas that seemed exciting, uh, but was fairly silent on implementation. So it's hard to evaluate how all of this would happen. So those are, those are our best thinking uh, between the schools division and the academics uh, team around some elements of the proposal that we think are quite strong and, and offer some opportunities for our students moving forward. We've also done our best to be um, honest and transparent about some real weaknesses and threats that we see in this proposal. And we think summarize well the 187 comments that have come forward uh, by members of this community. Thank you, Dr. Eggleston, for that analysis. At this time, I'd like to open it up to the committee for discussion. Superintendent, would you like to begin? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> and thank you, Dr. Eccleson and uh, Mr. Harris for your really thorough analysis um, of the comments and also for joining me and speaking with um, Charlestown staff. I also spoke with uh, the authors of the prospectus um, and just you know appreciate uh, everyone's contribution as we discuss. I'd like to focus my comments um, on our district's review of the proposal and then follow up on some of the promising parts and then some of the things that still um, give me some pause. But first, I think it's important to ground ourselves in the innovation school statute, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 71, Section 92, outline the three criteria screening committees should leverage to evaluate an innovation proposal. It presents a sound and coherent plan for improving the school performance and student achievement. It supports or enhances existing educational efforts in the district and reasonably can be expanded into a comprehensive innovation plan. I will use these criteria to focus my initial discussion of this proposal. As it relates to criteria one, sound plan, and criteria two, connection to district efforts, this prospectus has a number of positive factors. Specifically, it aligns well to the vision the district has outlined relative to career and college readiness. 
opportunities for dual enrollment and early college options, innovative career partnerships and expanded extra and co-curricular activities, um, which we've outlined in our quality guarantee. The perspective also outlines a path toward a major district initiative, increasing practices and opportunities for our inclusion. We must do more as a district to deliver on the promise of an inclusive education and the innovation perspectives presents an option to deliver on more inclusive seats at the secondary level. I see college and career readiness and inclusion as two of the most central parts of our district reform strategy and I appreciate the applicants focus on them. While these elements of the prospectus are noteworthy and promising, the prospectus is still yet vague on the single elements that must be the most important drivers of the district's work and that is of equity. For example, the prospectus does not articulate how the school will serve and support current Charlestown High School students who are educated in substantially separate programs at the school. The proposal also does not articulate how it will address the needs of current Charlestown High School students with limited or interrupted formal education. The plan is also silent on how the innovation school will address the needs of the more than 100 students at the three proposed feeder schools outside of potentially providing an early college opportunity with potential new higher education partners. The omission of specific groups of current and future Charlestown High School students, specifically those students who are most vulnerable and need to and should be thought of first during a planning process, cannot and does not align with the district's commitment to equity. My final comments for discussion focus on criteria three. The plan can be reasonably implemented and expanded. I'm concerned about our ability to reasonably implement and expand this prospectus into a comprehensive plan. The plan moved forward without any engagement of the Charlestown school community or any formal way for members of the community to provide context or input, perspective or ideas for the improvements proposed. Despite what has been reported in local media, my team did not discourage any of the prospective authors from meeting with the Charlestown High School community. Rather, we communicated in great detail what community engagement strategy should look like and offered suggestions and a recommended timeline for completing this process. My team also offered to support this important step and remained in touch, but we did not receive follow-up from the prospective writers until we received their full report and proposal. Since the formal submission of the prospectus, I've had the opportunity to meet with the faculty, staff, union representatives over several meetings, as well as the authors of the prospectus. Several things are clear to me from my meetings with the faculty and staff. This is a dedicated and committed team of educators. Most members of the team understand that the school needs to focus their improvement efforts, and they are willing to do the hard work, roll up their sleeves, and with dedicated support, they can make those tough changes that are necessary for the transformation of the school. The team wants to be part of the solution and to have the opportunity to partner with all stakeholders to drive those improvements through a democratic and engaged process. Because the engagement with the Charlestown High School community was absent in this prospectus and current stakeholders, educators, staff, students, families, their voices were not included, this has made implementing and expanding this plan in the timeframe outlined in the prospectus nearly if not impossible. The plan has positive encouraging components, many of which are already part of the BPS high school redesign. And I'm committed to working with all stakeholders to identify a path forward that allows us to leverage the current strengths at Charlestown High School and the worthy proposals offered by future parents and stakeholders in this prospectus and that we do so in a way that honors and respects all voices. Our strategic plan goals are to amplify voice, to cultivate trust. And I think we can do both here, while we also meet two other really key strategic goals, and those are to accelerate learning and to focus on equity. 
And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Berg, for your comments. Thank you, Superintendent Caselius. So over the last couple of months, I and the BTU have had an opportunity to review the prospectus, to meet with a few of the authors of the prospectus, to meet with the faculty, along with uh, Charleston High School families and students, and to discuss the proposal. And it has also become clear to us that educators at Charleston High are deeply committed to their students and their school. Their hard work and dedication is evident in the work they do every day and in their thoughtful response to the prospectus, the time they spent reviewing it even over the holidays and the recent surge in COVID in our city and our schools. Likewise, the students and families at Charlestown High are appreciative of what the school has to offer and the hard work that is being done there. And there are also many ideas of changes that could be made to improve the school. This prospectus is breathtaking in its scope, its rush, its incompleteness, and its hubris. Any plan for a school which does not involve current teachers, paraprofessionals, families, and students is both fundamentally exclusionary and doomed to fail. Without getting into the back and forth about who said what to whom, about who can talk to the school community, there's no one who can forbid a group from communicating with existing Charlestown High School educators, families, and students. And it seems that few efforts to do that were made. Now to the specifics, focusing again on the statutory criteria that uh, Dr. Caselius mentioned for evaluating an innovation prospectus. The first one being this, a sound plan. The vision in this prospectus is for really a different student body than current Charlestown High School programming serves. And as such, it, it's hard to see how this would improve performance and achievement. Now it's possible that by eliminating life skills, SEI, SLIFE and Road to Success programs, there might be a rise in state performance standards, but replacement is not the same as improvement. 17% of the current Charlestown High School student body is enrolled in the Life Skills Program, and they, along with all multilingual learners with ELD levels one to three, seem to be excluded entirely. And the prospectus caps the enrollment of students with disabilities at 25%. It is not at all clear that is even legal, and it is certainly not equitable. Currently, Charlestown High has 63% English learners or former English learner students. Students coded as ELD levels one to three and SLIFE students are legally entitled to instructional minutes and classroom groupings that cannot be satisfied in a general education classroom with a push in ESL teacher or paraprofessional. Will these students be welcome at this school or not? Now to some other aspects. Individualized learning plans are mentioned throughout the plan, and these often involve a lot of paperwork, but little connection to actual support of students. Next, the extended school hours and year, extending from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. beginning in August. These hours would make attending the school more difficult, especially for students living outside Charlestown. This would also be a conflict for students with jobs and other responsibilities outside of school, and to encourage adolescents to begin school even earlier than the existing 7.30 start time is a tremendous burden on them. It's unclear whether this is actually beneficial. 10 hours is a very long day, and many parents at Charleston High do not support these hours. And finally, the prospectus makes very limited mention of social emotional supports and services, an area of need at Charlestown High, which is mostly ignored beyond a mention of PBIS. There are also a number of inaccuracies in the prospectus, beginning with it states that almost 50% of students at the school have a disability and are taught with limited or no access to a learning experience in an inclusive setting. The reality is that 100% of diploma bound students with IEPs at Charlestown High take core academic classes in an inclusion setting. The prospectus states that the school currently partners with Bunker Hill Community College and provides access to college credit, but very minimal numbers of students participate in the program. The reality is 86 students are enrolled in early college this year with over 100 additional eighth and ninth grade students participating in pre-early college pathways programming. This year, all eighth graders will take a pathways exploration course in the spring to give them an introduction to the pathways options. The prospectus states that Charleston High School does not have advisory periods. The reality is that it does. 
On to criterion number two about enhancing existing educational efforts in the district. The program um, recommended, the prospectus outlines early college pathways partnering with three institutions while um, apparently canceling the existing programs with Bunker Hill and Cambridge College. The question is, would they dissolve the existing programs? And what would happen to students currently enrolled in these programs next year? Currently, BPS has been piloting and Charlestown High has been developing a competency-based grading model for several years. And this is the first year of full Im implementation at the school. The prospectus mentions competency levels, but there's no mention of a grading system or how that would be accomplished. Charlestown High educators have worked hard to develop vertical alignment maps using the district's anti-bias tool, criteria for authentic learning and cognitively demanding tasks. And the prospectus has no mention of anti-bias or anti-racism in it. Currently, ethnic studies, which is part of the BPS strategic plan, is being piloted at Charlestown High where teachers were members of the district supported curriculum writing group. There's no mention of that in the prospectus. Charlestown High has been going through a transformation uh, process, including the addition of a social worker and a family liaison, PD focused on uh, anti-racism, and there's no mention in the plan of this ongoing work. In terms of restorative justice, over the last few years, Charlestown High has been working to get all staff certified in tier one restorative justice practices, and in Road to Success, they've been implementing successfully a restorative program for years. Restorative justice is mentioned uh, in the prospectus, but there is again, no connection to or mention of the existing work at the school or in the district. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, student enrollment in Boston Public Schools is a hot button issue. And right now it's part of a district student enrollment plan that was designed with significant community input over a number of years. This prospectus proposes their own student assignment system without community input, which would have unknown domino effects on other schools in the district. Criterion number three is whether the plan could reasonably be expanded into a comprehensive plan. Class scheduling is complex in schools, even in small elementary schools, and all the more so in a comprehensive high school. There are no details in how the schedule will be designed within the staffing available given the budget. Saying staggered scheduling is different from making a plan that actually works. The choice to not engage with the existing Charlestown High community before submitting this perspective, and the choice to design this as a school closure and restart, has alienated many key partners. And in casting aside existing partnerships, the prospectus mentions upwards of 12 new partners. One longstanding issue with school restarts is the sheer number of partnerships can suck energy away from the core work of teaching and learning. The prospectus would be tremendously expensive and will necessarily depend on a lot of private fundraising. Relying on school level autonomy for parents to raise additional funds could increase inequality in the district. Accessing all staff is a loss of a lot of experience and expertise and creates another hurdle for the new school design process, hiring over 150 plus new staff in a period of a few months. There's no reason to cast aside the dedicated existing staff to build on the work that Charlestown High currently does. Now in closing, I want to note that there are so many suggestions in the prospectus that we support, and in fact that the BTU has long advocated for. These include inclusion done right. The two teacher co-teaching model is clearly a better option for students with and without disabilities, although we may quibble with the ratios in the prospectus itself. Healthier and improved school meals are an important option for our students, especially adolescents building healthy eating habits. We also welcome the interest in the school from residents in the neighborhood who have not yet been connected to Charlestown High. So we look forward to working collaboratively with the BPS and other stakeholders at Charlestown High in the community and the school district to lift the voices of educators, families, and students to make positive changes over the coming months at Charlestown High School. But this prospectus, is not the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to thank both Dr. Caselius and you, Mr. Berg, for your comments. I feel that your comments were quite extensive and very 
all encompassing. So I have only a very few comments um, to make. Um, as I read the perspectives, um, my first comments were, wow, you know, we often talk about what, what do we vision for all BPS students? We want schools that offer all of these things. And if we were talking about an empty building in which we were about to implement these things, I would say, wouldn't that be a wonderful experiment for us to do? Yes, it has many flaws in many of the areas that you both um, described, but what a vision. And it's with this kind of vision that we need to do all of our visioning for all of our high schools. I feel like the SWOT analysis um, said it the best in terms of really looking at the strengths and the opportunities that this perspectives and any new visioning of schools um, would offer us. But the weaknesses and the threats are things that we can learn from too. How do we make sure that these kinds of mistakes or these are the kinds of things that we think of in any new opportunity to rethink schools um, within Boston. So the perspectives I feel has offered us a lot to begin with, but all within itself, um, yes, there are many flaws, there are many issues that um, you both have de defined, particularly the issues around equity um, that we as a district need to learn from, but we have to begin somewhere. So I thank them for the opportunity of taking the step and putting forth on paper ideas, but at the same time for all of all of us to learn about the fact that we are living in a gentrifying city and gentrifying communities. And we have many, many different groups within the students that we serve. And as Boston Public Schools, we have to serve all of our audiences equitably. And so looking at opportunities that really allow us to serve all of our students well, particularly our students that are most vulnerable, many of whom Charlestown High School has been serving over the years, needs to really be the forefront of how we move forward on any new school plan. So I agree with both of you that um, there are many both positive ideas in this, but many, many areas where this perspective does not meet the, the mark of how we need to move forward at this moment. Are there any other comments before we move on to public comment? Hearing none again, I wanna thank you both. And now we will now move on to general public comment. Ms. Sullivan. Thank you, Chair. The public comment period is an opportunity for parents, students, and other concerned parties to make brief presentations to the school committee, excuse me, the screening committee on pertinent school issues. Questions on specific school matters are not answered at this time, but are referred to the superintendent for a later response. Questions on specific policy matters are not answered at this time, but may be the subject of later discussion by the committee. We have 11 speakers for general public comment. Each person will have three minutes to speak and I remind you when you have 30 seconds remaining. Those who require interpretation services will receive additional two minutes. Speakers may not reassign their time to others. Large groups addressing the same topic are encouraged to consolidate their remarks or choose a spokesperson to provide testimony. Written testimony is appreciated and encouraged. Please direct your comments to the chair and refrain from addressing individual screening committee members or district staff. When I call your name, please raise your hand virtually in Zoom. Also, please make sure you're signed into Zoom with the same name that you use to sign up for public comment. That will allow us to identify you when it's your turn to testify. Please state your name, affiliation, and what neighborhood you are from before you begin. Please unmute yourself and turn on your camera when it's your turn to testify. Only speakers who turn on their camera will be allowed to testify. Otherwise, speakers can submit their testimony in writing. We'll begin with Catherine Brady, followed by Nicole Flynn, Matthew Ruggiero, Lisa Jean Graff, and Carson Tagger. If you could please raise your hands virtually in Zoom. We'll begin with Catherine Brady. 
Yes, good afternoon. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, good evening. Thank you. So thank you for the opportunity um, to address the committee. And thank you as well for the analysis that you took the time to do. I know that that was an extensive amount of work on top of trying to support current schooling during the midst of COVID. Um, you addressed a number of the points. Oh, I'm sorry, I should back up. I am a mother of two current Charlestown High School students and reside in Charlestown. I also have an older son that is a graduate of one of the exam schools. So you addressed a number of the points that I wanted to make in your analysis, but I'd like to give some additional context to those. So the first one being the failure to consider the good that is happening at Charlestown High and one specifically um, around the concept of inclusion. So my younger sons are in ninth grade and are in fact labeled as being in a sub-separate setting they have in fact the opportunities to participate in inclusion classes at Charlestown. And when they talk about their experience, they don't acknowledge or feel that they are in sub-separate classrooms, which for one of my sons who was in a sub-separate classroom it, during elementary and middle school was really aware that he wasn't part of the community. They don't feel that at Charlestown and they have made really such such um, ground improving and feeling energized and motivated about school and really advocating for themselves while they're there. So that's number one. Number two, this notion of an autonomous school that really doesn't have to report, you know, the principal will report to the board of directors is how the proposal is structured. The fact that in addition to being funded by the city, it would also be funded by a nonprofit that's solely dedicated to that school, I find troublesome. Um, to me, and having gone through that exam school process with my older son, what we're doing with the, what they're proposing with the enrollment and the funding is just creating a, an equally exclusionary but different model for high school. And you know, knowing how what parents do to get their kids into specific elementary schools, we would be rolling the kids from those elementary schools and their siblings behind them right into this high school. And I don't think that for me, that isn't where we should be focusing our energy and attention if we want to create options for all students across the city of Boston. Um, and so, you know, I strongly urge you to vote this down and I strongly urge people to think about if we're gonna propose new models or make improvements to think about the way that we do it. It's, it's more than just getting the voice of the community. It's doing something that we can, that will benefit everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Nicole Flynn. Hello, my name is Nicole Flynn. My daughter, Ariana Alicorn Flynn, is a student and a junior at the high school. Um, I'm here to be against this proposal. When I was reading it, um, I was kind of blindsided and angered by some of the, the things that were in it, um, especially for the children that are in the sub-separate and in the ESL programs, that they would be basically kicked out of the school that they there's no place in this proposal for them and i think it is extremely important that they have a place um they're they're learning so much in charleston high they're doing so well my daughter is on an iep she is um in a regular class but she also is within the inclusion and being able to be with some of the sub separate kids in some of the classes that they're able to come in shows her how to work with others it teaches her how to be able to prepared to be an amazing person in the community, in the world, when she goes off to be in the workforce. She was also a part of the Pathways in the Health Program, and she's taking a course at Bunker Hill Community College, which she just got an A in, um, and is doing amazing because of the teacher's support she has at Charleston High, and that she's just pushing her to being the amazing person that she is. Um, if she had to be there from seven o'clock to five o'clock, she wouldn't be able to be excel in the things that she's excelling in. Doing a 10 hour day is exhausting. I have to do it many times during the week and I come home and I'm done. I'm exhausted to do that to a child because these students are still children. 
um, and then be able to take away um, opportunities from them to go to work and help their families, because many of the students do have to do that, um, I think is not a very fair, and they didn't think of these students when they were making this proposal. There are some great things in this proposal as the co-teaching, which I know Charlestown High is working on doing co-teaching, and I think all schools should have co-teaching in the elementaries, in the middle schools, and in the high schools. I think that should be just um, something that's done within all schools um, from now on. And if they wanna make a school, you do have the Edwards Middle School. I don't know what's being done with it, but that could have been a proposal for something they could have used that building to um, have their high school in. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Matthew Ruggiero. Hello, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Matthew Ruggiero. I'm a teacher at Charlestown High School and a graduate of Boston Public Schools. Um, and I think a lot of what I've thought about over the last month or two since being kind of completely blindsided in the middle of December um, by this prospectus uh, was summarized well in a lot of the public comment and a lot, or sorry, a lot of the screening committee's comments. Um, I think something I think about this that has, it wasn't mentioned here, but um, in this conversation of like sort of what this prospectus does in terms of starting a conversation um, about the open enrollment schools and what kind of education we want in Boston. Um, I think it also is important for us in terms of thinking about what we define as quality and what that conversation is about. Um, and when we talk about having high quality schools and what that means. Um, so, you know, I've worked in Boston for um, 10 years as an educator and, you know, also was a student in Boston Public Schools. And I think almost every school that I've worked at um, has at some point been rated as lower performing or under state test scores, under rankings, um, under turnaround. Um, and every single one of them has been an open enrollment school. Um, and I think that's important to think about that our open enrollment schools, like that term means like schools that don't pick which students they're going to teach. Um, and so when we talk about what makes for a quality high school, um, I hope we push further in what that means. Because in this prospectus, the justification for Charlestown needing to be shut down was that it has low test scores. It's one of the lowest performing schools um, in the state which is a measure that's fundamentally about, you know, measuring standardized tests um, and measurements of, you know, who, who goes to a school. Um, and that misses a whole lot of, you know, what goes on in a school, how people work together. Um, and it doesn't tell us a lot about like what opportunities are there or should be there. Um, you know, instead what that, those numbers and those, um, sort of labels get used is to, you know, justify a takeover, to justify that a school needs to be fixed or transformed from the outside or that it needs to be closed. Um, we see that in Boston and across the state. Um, so I don't know, I really hope that if this is gonna start a conversation or change a conversation about how we talk about quality and how we talk about open enrollment schools that we really push ourselves to um, start with the experiences of people who attend schools, um, who work in them, who have children in them, um, and go by what they know about their schools as a starting point um, for where we go. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lisa Jean Graff. Hi, good evening. Hello, um, my name is Lisa Jane Graff and I live in the Fenway neighborhood in Boston. I keep pushing the district to move away from applied behavioral analysis, which is common in substantially separate classrooms and to move towards well-resourced inclusion classrooms that support and respect the needs of neurodiverse students. At first glance, one would think that I would be supportive of this proposal. However, this plan does not offer a pathway for students towards inclusion, 
from substantially separate classrooms. It lets current students stay in their classrooms until they graduate and then not refill these classroom seats over time. This most likely means that students with similar high needs in the future will be placed in other schools and ABA programs in substantially separate classrooms. Student needs will not be better met. Classroom seats would just move elsewhere, possibly to less well-resourced schools. I've been taking policy and leadership classes this year, and one of the things that I learned is that people don't fight change when the change is positive. They fight change when there is loss involved. Making a school less accessible in the long term for students with high needs is not progress. Prioritizing access to students who live close by is not progress. Taking away autonomy from the school community is not progress. Please reject the Charlestown High School proposal today. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Our next speaker is Carson Tager, followed by Mary O'Neill, Sarah Wharton, Brittany Hampton, Megan Castro, Matthew McGinnis, and Cecil Carey. If you could all please raise your hands virtually in Zoom. Carson Tager. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, can you see me okay? I'm having a little problem seeing if yes, it's Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you all for having me this evening. My name is Carson Tager. My wife, Lana, and I live at 260 Medford Street here in Charlestown. I am literally looking out my son's bedroom window at Charlestown High. We have an 11-year-old son who attends fifth grade at the Warren Prescott here in Charlestown, and we fully support the initiative to turn Charlestown High into an innovation school as soon as possible. I'm an Army veteran who has been an elected member of the Charlestown Neighborhood, Neighborhood Council. Uh, I've been a mentor with the Boys and Girls Club of Charlestown and on the board for the YMCA of Charlestown as well. My wife is a small business owner right here out of our home next to the high school. She has served on the board for the Charlestown Mothers Association and the Little Mystic River Steering Committee, which is a small piece of property that's all actually owned by Boston Public Schools that's right behind the high school. For the past decade, we've spent many days on CHS property from my son's lacrosse and swimming and even becoming close with the boys basketball team and their coach, Hugh Coleman, as they sometimes attend our church here in Charlestown. We want to first acknowledge the staff and students at CHS. I follow them on Instagram. I see their efforts and I don't want our issues placed on their shoulders. My wife is a former educator and the first thing she learned about the success of her students in school was the involvement of the community and parents. A majority of CS, uh, CHS students, they live so far away, their parents and guardians involvement becomes almost impossible. I don't know the exact percentage of uh, how many students live out of the community, but as, as I understand it, it's probably 80% of the students. 20 years ago, Charlestown parents learned this fact and built a parent organization to help the Warren Prescott become the success story that it is today. Approximately five years ago, parents of the Harvard Kent here in Charlestown realized the same thing, and they're now building to another huge success. Charlestown High has had decades to prove their model, and by no fault of the students, it has failed. BPS has a few exemplary high schools, and we all know who they are, but so many of the high school choices in the city rate as some of the worst academics in the state and the country. Look at the rankings at U.S. News & World Report. It ranks BLS as number one in New England. Charlestown High ranks as 13,394th in the country. It ranks 184th just here in the city of Boston. Sometimes the most difficult problems are missed by those closest to the situation. We need a perspective from 30,000 feet. I've seen from many across other parts of the city talk about what's best for Charlestown, but they have no idea of our wants, our needs and challenges, including reasonable travel for students. Some also say this is a race issue. I see the student body at Warren Prescott in Charlestown and Harvard Kent every day. And those thriving students are of all races, religions, and socioeconomic backgrounds. If you want proof of our vision for CHS, just look at those two schools and their academic success. We want to see CHS thrive. We pine for my son to attend Charlestown High, but we can in good conscience send him to a school that doesn't offer the full immersive high school experience for everyone. We want to see the best our child has to offer the future, and that happens when this school votes to be great and innovate. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our next speaker is Mary O'Neill. Good afternoon. My name is Mary O'Neill. I'm a Dorchester uh, native and a North End resident. Uh, I'm the child of two BPS teachers, including a longtime BTU leader, a relative of multiple educators, a BPS graduate, a community volunteer, and most importantly, a parent of two Boston Public School students. And I voice my support for the Charlestown High School Innovation School proposal. Three years ago this month, the Globe published the Valedictorians Project. That series of articles tracking outcomes for the very best BPS students was an indictment of Boston high schools across the board and should have been a call to arms for dramatic, urgent changes. Instead of seeing immediate innovative plans, we were told over and over that a plan is coming, one that will somehow offer a panacea for all. Many families expressed their skepticism in their enrollment decisions, often choosing places other than the Boston Public Schools. And that includes many families of BPS teachers and leaders. And usually for families, their choices are for high school are choosing places other than Charlestown High School. In five years, BPS law has lost over 5,000 students. In a decade, Charlestown High School has lost over 500 students. Excluding the recent addition of seventh and eighth grade, this amounts to a student body reduction of 42%. BPS has projected a further year-to-year -year enrollment decline of 15% at Charlestown. This is not sustainable. I am thankful that a group of parents recognized this urgency, stepped forward, and notwithstanding roadblocks, drafted a creative and thoughtful prospectus on how to stem these losses and how to improve educational outcomes for students of all abilities at Charlestown. Rather than wait for a top-down supposed perfect solution that will magically improve all of our open enrollment high schools, this committee should embrace the prospectus and vote yes to advance to the planning stages for a rejuvenated Charlestown High School. No proposal is perfect, and the committee has a chance to make improvements in the planning stages that can address the concerns that we've heard from the current Charlestown High School community. Similarly, the school committee can make decisions around equitable access to the school using a citywide selection process and is not required to adopt any one of the three, although I only heard the committee talk really about one, but any one of the three potential uh, admissions policies. Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Boston students deserve action now, and this prospectus presents actionable plans that with further adjustment can have an immediate and positive effect on the school performance and on student achievement across the board. It should be supported and the school committee should have been the place where ideas like this begin and where we have ideas for schools so that we can model good behavior and then share those ideas. Instead, what we have had is silence and delay and I welcome and this committee should welcome adoption of creative ideas like that are presented in this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sarah Wharton. Good evening. Uh, thank you all for your time today. Uh, we do appreciate all the research and uh, Discussion that's gone on before this meeting, um, both from authors, uh, from the school committee, staff, and all parties involved. My name is Sarah Wharton, and I'm parent of a third grader and a K-2 student in BPS. We live in the North End. I'd like to take a moment to strongly urge this committee to, to vote in favor of the proposed changes to Charlestown High School, transitioning it to an innovation and inclusive high school. While this plan is admittedly far from perfect, a vote in favor of moving forward on the prospectus is not casting these ideas into stone, but rather it is an opportunity for all stakeholders to dig in and make a move towards the substantive change for a school that desperately needs it. 
we know that there are missteps and that there have been moments that have been missed opportunities. However, these errors should not prevent the entire school committee and the uh, panel before us from thinking about the potential that many of these powerful options and opportunities have been acknowledged and allowing them to be enacted into a new school that has been failing for a number of years. Keeping this perspective alive and moving forward would allow for deeper engagement with the current students and families that was missed, and it would bring in the next planning phase, providing further improvement and potentially new and better ideas being implemented in a way that would work best. The Boston school system needs more secondary options for special education programs, and this is a particularly opportune moment to open another rare inclusion high school within the district, offering more quality seats to these students with disabilities. Beyond the special education aspect, let us also embrace the chance to open up the future after high school to these students with the certificate or college credit program proposed. These, this would allow these student populations, particularly populations in the most need, a jumpstart into a better career after, after graduation or a boost into continuing on to a potential four-year degree. Above all, it is time for the district to prove their dedication to real significant changes to the city's open enrollment high schools by supporting large-scale changes as proposed here. Let us embrace this engagement and the forward momentum that we're seeing based here from our parents and from our communities. And let's move forward with those who are eager to improve our existing schools. As another parent had said before, we must look beyond details to not let perfect get in the way of good. I thank you for your time and I hope you take this under consideration. Thank you. Our next speaker is Brittany Hampton. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, you're muted, Miss Hampton. My apologies, you'd think after two years of Zooms, I'd have a better idea of how to do this. Um, good evening and thank you all for your time today. My name is Brittany Hampton and I have two children in the BPS system attending, attending the Elliott K through eight. I appreciate hearing there is an army vet and small business owner as my husband is also active duty in the army and I am a certified small business owner in Charlestown as well. I feel fortunate that my children are in first grade in K-1, so our high school decision is not immediate as I feel handcuffed with no viable options at this time. I'm speaking today in full support of the prospectus to reopen Charlestown High School as an innovation and inclusion school. Please consider that this is just a proposal and the full plan would need to be developed with robust engagement from the current Charlestown High School community. Yes, it is strong and ambitious, but there's no reason to vote no due to the current lack of engagement because there is still time to center the voices of current students and families in the planning phase. The authors agree with feedback regarding ensuring all current special education programs and students should remain without disruption. And they recommended that the number of students with disabilities who attend should grow over time, not decrease. I was unaware until recently that BPS only has one formal inclusion high school, which is near impossible to attend if you are not a student by third grade. That does not seem equitable to our students with high needs. They deserve more schools that allow them to learn and engage with their peers. The authors also believe that the most equitable enrollment pattern possible should be selected during the planning phase. This could be the current citywide enrollment policy, but BPS should do simulations to ensure it will be equitable. The committee should vote yes and then fully engage all stakeholders to develop a plan that will meaningfully improve the city's open enrollment high schools. Boston needs a way to significantly change the course of our open enrollment high schools. We cannot rely on doing small things and expecting the dramatically different outcomes of our students deserve. Anything short of an ambitious innovation plan like the prospectus proposes will amount to nothing more than the status quo. Thank you again, and I implore you to vote yes for the betterment of our children. 
Thank you. Our next speaker is Megan Castro. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Megan Castro. I'm a parent of three kids in Boston Public Schools, grades six, two, and K2. Thank you to the committee for having this meeting and opening it up for the public to give comment. To be honest, after listening to the feedback already from the screening committee members, it seems that your decision has already been made. It made me not want to testify at all, but I will try anyway. Um, my kids have had a wonderful experience so far in BPS. We have so many devoted and talented teachers in the system, as well as many amazing leaders and administrators. Thank you for all that you do. I also wanna thank the dedicated parents who are the reason we're having this meeting, the four authors of the prospectus. What they have put together blew me away. They've lifted up this crucial conversation for all of us. I would like to thank them for beginning this dialogue and the many insightful ideas they lay out in the prospectus. We're all beneficiaries of their efforts. Is the prospectus perfect? No. Is it worth continuing this discussion to make it more perfect? I believe it is. The best part of the prospectus for me is the full inclusion co-teaching model that other people have already mentioned. One of my kids is currently thriving in a robust inclusion classroom. I'm worried about where he will matriculate for high school. There are not many options for him and other kids like him. I, for this and many other reasons, I asked the committee to vote yes today. A no vote would close the door on this important discussion. Same old, same old, how disappointing. Instead, let's begin by lifting boats, starting with this one. We need more creativity in improving the schools in BPS, especially the failing high schools. More innovation. Isn't Charleston High School on the short list of schools to close? Is that what this committee would prefer to happen? First, I think also I think we need to address the statement that any student, any special education student especially, would lose their current seat at Charleston High School. Some parents um, and teachers testified to this earlier tonight. It, that is not true. The authors of the, this prospectus explicitly state that no current students would be displaced or have their current education disrupted. The authors of the, this prospectus are parents of students with disabilities. They would never want this to happen to th their kids or yours. I encourage the teachers and the parents who testified to this effect to read the prospectus, and I hope that this falsity can be quieted. At a school committee meeting I listened to back in December 2021, the superintendent talked about one of her main leadership mantras. She said the mantra was, if you build it, they will come. Where is, I wrote it down in my kitchen. It was hanging on my window. Where is that mantra now? If we work together to build an amazing, creative, innovative, inclusive high school, won't kids from around the city come? Don't we want that for them? Mr. Berg called this perspective, this prospectus breathtaking. What I think is breathtaking is the idea of doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. That is breath, breathtaking to me. They say that's insanity is doing the same thing over and over. A yes vote would be inspiring from you all today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Matthew McGinnis. Good evening. My name is Matt McGinnis. Uh, I am a father of four children, three of whom are in BPS and God willing, four will be in BPS next year. I've been a resident of Charlestown for almost 18 years. Um, I have one son with disabilities and I'm the husband of one of the applicants of the prospectus. I'm gonna make a bold prediction that the committee is gonna deny the application today. And if it does so, we'll be doing so not based on the merits of the application, many of which have already been acknowledged, but instead, it will focus on the lack of community engagement. Uh, as all of us know, there has been vehement disagreement as to who is to blame for that lack of community engagement. You can probably imagine which side of that issue I fall on. More importantly, however, what I would urge this committee to think about is this should be about the substance, not the process. We should be focusing on the substance of the perspectives here for the children, not the process issues that the adults that are dealing with may encounter. 
The committee may instead also focus on, as some have already observed, that there are a lack of details, that some aspects of the prospectus are vague. Of course they are. It is a prospectus. It is not a plan. Um, as many have already commented, those details, including revisions, amendments, and enhancements would be part of any process that would actually result in a full plan. And another important part of that process to a plan would be the precise community engagement that people have focused on, the precise community engagement that the authors have sought since the beginning of this process. This proposal should instead be judged on the merits of its ideas and on how it addresses the question, what is the best way to rescue a failing school in our community? People of good faith can debate the best answer to that question. And people of good faith can rightly point to the good and hard and excellent work of many of the teachers and students that are at the existing school right now. But there should be no debate among our community that what we need to do is figure out how to answer that question. How do we best fix a failing school? Now, a question that some have been willing to debate is whether uh, Charlestown High School, the current school, is in fact failing. And some have been um, urged, including in the media, to suggest that the school is doing just fine. To be clear, a school with plummeting enrollment year after year, even after adding grades, is not succeeding. A school that only graduates four out of 10 of its students with disabilities and six out of 10 of its students without disabilities is not succeeding. We need to be able to agree on this point or we will never begin the substantial work necessary to improve these outcomes for our children. I'm also gonna predict that instead of taking meaningful action today, the committee is instead going to turn to the common refuge in situations like this when bold ideas are predicted, a committee. But we all know what they say about trying the same thing and expecting a different result. Our children, including my child with disabilities, deserve better. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker is Cecil Carey. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Hi, my name is Cecil Carey. I am an ethnic studies and history teacher at Charlestown High School. I'm also the Boston Teachers Union rep and I am a resident of Jamaica Plain. I hear the parents who have spoken tonight that only want what's best for their students. We as educators at Charlestown High are aligned in that BPS desperately needs a long-term community-driven plan for its open enrollment high schools. This needs to be a systemic conversation focused on all BPS high schools. We agree with the need to significantly overhaul our open enrollment schools, and we hope that this will begin that conversation. While we hope that the prospectus is voted down tonight, we also hope this is not the end of the conversation. We're committed to moving forward as partners, equal stakeholders to improve our school and craft a sustainable future for it. We hope that Charlestown families, BPS, BTU, and all other stakeholders can come together collaboratively to do so. The writers of this prospectus did not do that which is why it's not a realistic plan, why it's a problematic plan, and why it was frankly hurtful for many members of our community to read. I hope that those in favor of the prospectus see the educators, parents, and students pushing back against it as testament to the fact that CHS is a passionate community deserving of respect. The, and I wanted to say that the conversation around our school should begin with the excellent proposals forwarded by the Boston Teachers Union's contract package, which includes some of the things that, the, that we're arguing about today, such as a full inclusion model. As a staff, we've been fighting for a full inclusion model, the funding required for it, for years. Even the best plan will fail without the adequate resources, staffing, and planning. And I hope that we can all agree to call on BPS and the state of Massachusetts to make that happen. Um, I wanted to close from students. Um, we're constructivists at Charleston High School, not dogmatists. We presented this prospectus as is without presenting our own thoughts to students. And in my classes, only one student supported it. I wanted to share a few comments from students who um, gave me permission to do so. 
30 seconds. One student, one student said, students go to this school, not parents. So if the changes make us students uncomfortable, you should listen to us. Parents aren't going to be the ones experiencing the change, their kids will. Another student said, I hope you vote down this proposal. We know this school needs to change. What we need is BPS to invest money in our school for things like sports and adding classes for things that students really wanna learn about. And lastly, I believe this proposal won't be helpful towards students or staff because it's way too complex and unnecessary. I argue that this plan will inconvenience students and staff who have children and siblings to get ready for school. I know this because I've experienced it. This plan does not work for students like me. Thank you all for your time. Thank you, Mr. Carey. Chair Robinson, that concludes our speakers for public comment. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. And thank you to those of you who spoke this evening and shared your perspective. Your testimony is extremely important to us. I will now invite the committee to review for whether this perspective, number one, presents sound and coherent plan for improving school performance and student achievement. Number two, supports or enhances existing educational efforts in the district. And number three, reasonably can be expanded into a comprehensive innovation plan. I will now open it up for discussion. Superintendent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was pretty thorough in my comments earlier, so I don't have much more to add other than I appreciate the testifiers comments and I feel the urgency that they feel around the high school redesign. Um, I'll have some more comments as we close about next steps and, and the plans that um, I have after we take the vote, but I'm very appreciative of um, the conversation earlier uh, with Mr. Berg, your comments, Madam Chair, and the comments uh, that we heard this evening, as well as the SWOT analysis done um, and those perspectives that were provided in the public testimony that we had for review and comment. So I don't have anything further. Thank you. Mr. Berg? Yeah, just briefly, I, I also would like to um, really thank the folks who provided public comment, whether it be here today, or uh, 187 people, educators, families, students, who took the time to um, write, to submit written comments. And it's also really a testament, I think, to the commitment of uh, parents across the city who want the best for their kids, of hardworking teachers and paraprofessionals, and guidance counselors and librarians, and our students who are working under difficult conditions, particularly last year and this year, to um, you know, get themselves the best education they can and to learn as much as they can. Um, I do think, and, and I will refer back to my statement earlier, but I think you know, looking at whether this um, perspectives presents a sound and coherent plan for improving school performance and student achievement, um, I don't think it does. Um, I think that, and, and I did, uh, we understand that the prospectus clearly um, says that existing students would remain, but the um, ability of entering students with the uh, uh, levels of designations and IEPs as they're written would, and some English learners would likely be excluded. The, um, I think too long length of the school day the lack of priority for social emotional learning and the lack of input uh, mean that it does not meet that criteria. And the second one is whether it supports or enhances existing educational efforts and, and we believe it does not. It uh, largely ignores or has limited knowledge of the state of the existing school. There's a lot to build on there and, and there's also a lot of room for, for growth clearly. Um, but the existing inclusion program, the existing early college program, the advisory period, the ethnic studies curriculum, restorative justice efforts, competency-based grading, and other efforts are, are not built on, but rather cast aside and starting from scratch. And thirdly, whether it can reasonably be expanded 
into a comprehensive innovation plan. Uh, we believe it cannot. The prospectus is unworkable and, the pro and incomplete. The proposed new school is immensely complicated. It's very unlikely it could be implemented effectively at all, much less in September, considering budgeting, staffing, leadership selection, program finalization, fundraising. And really, I guess there's no reason that an innovation school is needed at all to move Charlestown High forward and make it a better place to work and to learn. So the BTU does look forward to working collaboratively with BPS um, to lift educators' voices, to lift student and family voices, to work with school and community stakeholders to bring needed changes, needed changes, resources, and programs to Charlestown High. Thank you. Um, I have just a few comments too. And first of all, I also want to echo the thanks to the writers of the perspectives, um, the, the families and the staff and the students of the current Charlestown High School, as well as the Charlestown community and to the many people that um, offered their, their um, public comment, either written or tonight as well. Um, I agree with all the things both of you have said around um, how we look at this proposal right now. I think the biggest issues for me is that um, in all three of these issues, I could say yes, partially, but we're not there yet. One of the things that I think about is in the comments of some of the parents that we heard tonight, Many of them have very young children and live in Charlestown. And I would hope that as we look forward to over the next period of time to look at the improvements of Charlestown by the time their children are in high school, they will, they will be part of a Charlestown high school that does meet all of the criteria of this perspective and then some, but will have taken care of and will continue to take care of all of the students that either now find Charlestown High School a home and the number of special needs children who live within the Charlestown community now or served by schools that would support Charlestown would also find the right kind of home in Charlestown High School with the right kinds of programs. My major concerns with the proposal is the timing. There are a lot of things that would need to be done to make most of what is here and then some of the issues that current Charlestown High School staff might also envision a reality. So for the reasons of, of nothing more right now than a timing issue, I don't feel that this is the right, we are not ready to move forward with the perspective. Are there any other comments? Right. Thank you for this discussion. And in light of the conversation, I think we are ready to vote. In accordance with state law, I will ask each member to please state your vote as well as the reason for your vote. The reason should include a reference to one or more of the three points below. They may also include the SWAT and or public comment. Number one, present sound and coherent plan for improving school performance and student achievement, supports or enhances existing educational efforts in the district and reasonably can be expanded into a comprehensive innovation plan. The votes in the state of reasons will be recorded in the minutes. A two thirds vote of the screening committee is required to either one, approve, two, return, or three, reject the perspectives. At this time, I would like to ask each member, beginning with Superintendent Consalius, to state their vote and provide the reason for their vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I am voting to reject the plan um, for the reasons I stated earlier in my first opening comment, and I went through one, two, and three for the record. And so we're recording this so they're there so I don't have to restate them. In particular, number three, reasonably can be expanded into a comprehensive innovation plan. I think that there are issues with the timeline. Um, the budget is unclear. Um, the autonomy of graduation requirements and policies, I believe, is problematic, particularly for our code of conduct, our equity circulars, and the um, not met, you know, the uh, mass core requirements and uh, how we serve our students with disabilities. Um, also, uh, the, the 
the engagement process is an important process. Building community requires uh, respect of all folks at the table when creating and designing um, new schools. And you know that would be, I think, very important for all communities to come together. Um, we also have a policy in the district that requires us before we vote on anything to engage with our SPED PAC, our EL task force, our OAG task force, our citywide parent task force, and I think that in our community equity roundtable, and those are processes I think that are still very much necessary as we think about overall high school redesign uh, and um, moving forward. I do think there are a number of promising practices um, that are included within the prospectus that I'm eager uh, to discuss with the community and the stakeholders um, as we move forward. So those are my reasonings for my no vote, in addition to the more specific uh, reasonings that I shared earlier in my comments. Mr. Berg is next. Uh, thank you. I, I am. My vote is to reject this plan, um, notwithstanding again some of the good ideas that are contained within it, and we do hope that um, those ideas can be built on, uh, for the reasons that I stated in my second comments that I'll repeat briefly here for the record. Um, number one, a sound and coherent plan. Uh, it really does not. It um, focuses over time on serving a different student body than the existing one. It is not, it, it, it is exclusionary in many respects um, to students who are currently served by Charlestown High School. The second criterion, whether it supports existing educational efforts, it largely uh, supplants and, and knocks down existing partnerships and programs and uh, proposes entirely new ones rather than building on the um, strengths that currently exist in Charleston High School. And finally, whether it reasonably can be expanded, the complexity uh, and scope, particularly around the scheduling, the budgeting, and the staffing um, seem unlikely to be workable without significant additional funding, which itself is raises issues around equity. Um, and the timeline is really not realistic. That said, again, there are particularly around the co-teaching model for inclusion, some promising practices. And we, I do know that the authors of the plan and those who are committed to it in the Charlestown com community and elsewhere around the city would have a lot to offer. And, and um, hopefully we can work together to build um, an even better Charlestown High School uh, moving forward. So my vote is no for those reasons. You are muted, Madam Chair. Sorry, yes. Um, my vote is also to reject at this moment. Um, and, and a lot of my vote is based on what the SWOT analysis um, revealed, that there were significant strengths and opportunities, but I really feel the list of considerable weaknesses and threats would really need to have been gone back over and ameliorated before we could move forward. A number of those are things that both you and Dr. Caselius have mentioned in terms of um, really making sure that um, everything for the current student's body and the, the, and the future diverse student body would be dealt with. And as I said earlier, if we were talking about putting this program in, a, in an empty school building and, and building the, the school audience to be able to meet the needs of many of the wonderful ideas and the perspectives, that would be a very different um, issue for me than the current one where we have students in a building um, that would like to graduate from that building and other students like them wanting to come into this school that this perspective does not clearly um, 
define how that would happen. So I just feel at this moment, it is not ready to move forward without considerable review. So based on the three to three vote of the screening committee to reject the innovation perspectives, I will entertain a motion at this time to reject the Charlestown Innovation and Inclusion High School perspective as presented. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Ms. Sullivan, will you please call, call the roll? Mr. Berg? I just want to be clear. Uh, yes. A yes that vote is, is in favor of the motion to reject, the, correct? The motion to reject, correct. It's I a yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Caselius? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. I'll now open it up for final comments. Dr. Caselius? Madam Chair, Vice President Berg, um, thank you for being here and taking such thoughtful um, time on this matter during a time when, you know, we're all very busy with the surge, but every single school, every single student matters, and our core value is to lift up voices, and so I'm very appreciative of the parents who came together, and I hope they will stay engaged in the process moving forward. And I'd like to share some framing comments as we outline the next steps in what is a very important conversation about our high schools. As members of the BPS community, you might recall that I rolled out our, to our school committee in a series of proposals in 2020 that were designed to raise expectations, to improve instruction and support our students in all of our high schools. And this was done to provide a rigorous series of courses to access higher education and early college while in high school and individualized success plans for our students that ensured a path to continued growth and development after high school. We set out with a series of policies and initiatives to enact this vision. This included adopting the Mass Core, common graduation standards, a system-wide approach to what it means to graduate from a BPS high school, changes in the sequencing and strengthening of math instruction with traditional math sequence matching what is used in the exam schools, professional development, including professional development and advanced placement and in international baccalaureate classes, and, more, and a more consistent approach to grading. Um, we've added social workers and family liaisons to every single school to work on the social emotional well being of our students, as Mr. Berg stated. And we passed exam school admissions policy, uh, which is important to the overall equity that we, a vision we have in our schools, uh, in our school district. And I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish over these past two years. The goal then, as it is now, is to ensure every single high school delivers the quality education and support that our students need and deserve. That includes new access to academic counselors that we are proposing this year's budget, uh, athletics and increasing our athletics, uh, arts programming and increasing arts programming, including an art, a library in every school, science labs, inclusionary practices for our students with disabilities, native language literacy through our Look Act work and the seal of biliteracy, literacy programming for students who are still struggling to read, securing a diverse, caring and competent staff, one-to-one -one technology, college and career pathways, and necessary investments in our school buildings, which our new mayor has pledged to uh, make a priority. Our efforts obviously have been slowed by the pandemic, but they have progressed. And I wanna make clear to families that this is a top priority. We have funded this work and we will continue to fund this work with additional investments provided by the city and our ESSER dollars. This is also related to our work to reduce the number of grade configurations we have in the city and to promote continuity and more predictable pathways for students so that they have one point of transition during school. 
And as I said earlier, I appreciate the urgency our community has. And it is time to get back to the high school redesign efforts and to solidify our pathways and to increase opportunity, close opportunity gaps and ensure every single high school in every single neighborhood is a first choice for our parents. I will present specific next steps on this work at next week's school committee meeting. And I look forward to building the engagement process necessary to include all stakeholders within the community to design the plan for Charlestown High School moving forward. Taking the best of Charlestown High School as we've it was been shared with us and all of the promising aspects of this prospectus. I hope that those who are interested in the success of Charlestown and those who have expressed this support for Charlestown High School will join us and roll up their sleeves and work alongside the current school community and the district to provide the best for our kids and the future kids who will be coming to Charlestown. This is just one step in delivering on the promise of our overall high school redesign as we work together to improve all of our high schools. And I look forward to sharing more with you, Madam Chair, and the full school, school committee next week. Thank you, Dr. Caselius. Mr. Berg. Nothing more than um, thank you to everyone who has devoted their time to writing this prospectus, to uh, being committed to our schools as parents, as educators, as students, um, as someone who is the father of two BPS graduates, someone who taught in the schools for over a couple of decades and now in my work for the BTU. The Boston Public Schools is deeply important to me, to my family, uh, to my career, and um, I know that it, that the same is true of all of you who have spent time in this meeting. And I do hope, uh, join with Dr. Caselius, and I know you, Ms. Robinson, and hoping that the community can work together to, uh, although we're not choosing the exact route of this prospectus, to ensure that the, the changes, positive changes are made and that we can build on the strengths of Charlestown High School and um, make it an even better place to work and to learn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berg. And I have no further comments other than to say, Superintendent, I do look forward to the next steps as we continue to move forward on creating the new version of Charlestown High School and the rest of our high schools as well. Thank you. This brings us to the end of our meeting. There's nothing further. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion or objection to the motion? Ms. Sullivan, will you please call the roll? Mr. Burr? Yes. Dr. Caselius? Yes. Ms. Robinson? Yes. We're adjourned, thank you. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>